Okay, uh, let's talk about our most complex uh, object, uh, the reflective pitcher. Uh, so first of all, we need to think about what the general value of the pitcher is. That's a difficult thing because it's highly reflective, a lot of brighter values, a lot of darker values, but we can see that the material is kind of silvery, which means that it's more or less mid-tone. Um, we could leave it like this, actually. This might not be such a bad starting point, but I think we're going to get shinier reflections and something that's a little bit more accurate by giving this whole thing a slight tone. Okay, so we got the local value. Uh, let me use my chamois to even out this tone. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, let's see if we can sort of find the general value relationship between the lighter side and the darker side. Because there actually is one, right? Light is coming from here. It's generally darker here. I'm going to put that in in a really simple way. Guys, whenever you're dealing with something with a really strong texture or a strong reflective quality, make sure that you have some sense of roundness underneath, some sense that light is coming from this direction and that the form is turning away into shadow. So essentially treat this object as if it was matte at the beginning, as if it wasn't reflective. Think about the general shape of the thing, think about where the light is coming from, and see if you can get some sense of roundness before you even start putting in details. So I recommend starting with something perhaps like this. Let's go a little bit darker here. Now obviously uh, the object is reflective, there's no coarse shadow, there's no reflected light, but we do have a darker side. Uh, it helps again, once again to establish that at the very beginning. Okay, uh, the next step is both difficult and fairly straightforward. I need to draw what's there. So let's draw the reflection of the dark glass. It's going this way. It's going down this way. A lot of really interesting stuff going on. We see a reflection of the shadow running this way. The only trick to all of this is to break things down to simple steps and to be systematic so that every time you draw, you know exactly what the general strategy is going to be. You know how to simplify stuff into smaller, more digestible steps. Once again, if I try to tackle this whole thing all at once, I'm going to be very quickly overwhelmed. Too much to think about. Let's go a little bit darker. And then when I go dark, I'm comparing one value against the next. So I've got a really strong dark here. And I'm asking myself, is this strong dark quite as strong as some of the stuff here? No, it isn't. The darks in this green glass go darker than just about any other part in this composition with a few little tiny exceptions. All right, so what else do we need? Well, uh, it goes darker behind the table here. We've got a reflection of the table here, by the way. We've got one big giant highlight here, a bunch of scratches. Something that looks like this. And a bunch of reflections, right? So I can see a little bit of the depth of my studio here. It's going in this way, going this way. We have a reflection of, um, I don't know, I think maybe it's a door possibly going in here going like this. The more reflections you put in, the more reflective your object is going to be. So here we have a reflection of the table coming from here, and I think I even see a second glass. Yeah, so this thing is reflecting here. So everything's flipped upside down. Interesting, kind of beautiful, fun to draw. I enjoy these kinds of complex situations. I find them challenging, interesting. Hopefully you guys do too. Right? 
you don't see this as some kind of horrible struggle, but as something that's enjoyable. seeing the glass here. For me, all this stuff is fun. Doesn't mean it's not hard work. It is hard work. Definitely get tired doing this. Definitely. Uh, but, look, uh, I think a big part of it is that uh, at the beginning when you learn how to draw, you're not drawing stuff that's particularly entertaining. Once you get to a certain level where you can draw anything you want, uh, this whole thing becomes self-motivating. It becomes interesting. It's a little bit like playing the piano. Right at the beginning, you're stuck playing scales. It's tedious. It's repetitive. However, once you get past the threshold to the point where you can start playing stuff that's actually listenable, enjoyable, especially once you get to the point where you can play whatever music you want to, then you'll be able to practice for hours and hours and hours without actually getting bored. So you guys are almost at that stage. You're close anyway. Uh, things are still a struggle. We're still drawing relatively simple, relatively basic shapes. But little by little, things are going to become increasingly more fun. So we just need to get you past the point where you're struggling with cubes, cylinders, the basics of drawing. Once we get you past that point, then this will become self-motivating, self-entertaining. You just have to get good enough. So notice, I'm only focusing on the darks right now. I'm not focusing on the lights, only the darks. One thing at a time. Okay, now I'm going to start erasing out. <clears throat> oh, there's some fun stuff in here that I missed, actually. There's a little counter-reflection of a pair here. All kinds of enjoyable stuff. I feel like I'm working too hard to convince you guys this is entertaining. Look, look how fun it is. Okay, maybe it's not fun at all. I don't know. Maybe you guys find this whole thing boring. All right. Let's erase out. Don't jump to adding white to this thing, right? See how far you can go just with your eraser. You'll be able to go pretty far. And then, once I'm ready to add white, make sure you, once again, erase out all the areas where you feel like you're going to add it. So definitely here, we've got this big, oh, drop my eraser, this big area here. Uh, this could use a little bit of erasing out, I think. Um, by the way, we've got scratches. We'll put them in. We'll get there later in a little bit. So stay tuned. All right. Okay, let's add some white to this. Um, where's my white chalk? I don't see it. There it is. Okay, uh, definitely here. Definitely. Um, there's a few spots here. Um, you know what, I think that's a reflection of the light source, but hey, it's there, right? So let's put it in. If it's there, it's there. So you're not always obligated to be absolutely accurate to what's there in front of you. Uh, quite often there's going to be situations. Um, landscape is a good example where it's quite often to your benefit to take things out, to simplify. All right, so we've got one big, really solid, shiny, glowing highlight here. We've got a glow around it. What else? What else? What else? Okay, um, a few little highlights here and there, and then we'll be good to go. And then I'll do one more video on how to just put this whole thing together, how to organize this. Um, okay, the cube. Mm, okay, next video. We'll work on the cube a little bit. We'll talk about it. Um, listen, guys, at this stage, uh, you can start putting in all the scratchy textures if you want. Um, you can use your eraser to erase out this kind of stuff. Maybe some of this will go brighter than the tone of the paper, quite possibly. So 
maybe some of these highlights come out like this gently. See how that works? Detail comes second. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to stop, and the next one we'll do with the background, the table, and if I have time, a little bit of this cube. Okay, so this is hopefully the last installment of this series. Uh, one thing I neglected to do, and it's actually a pretty big mistake, was to deal with both the background and the table very early on. Uh, I guess I rushed this demo a little bit. Um, if I ever do it again, uh, maybe I'll show you a slightly different process where I lay in the objects and get the background really early on. Look, the way the background looks and the way the table looks has a really strong effect on what the objects look like. Why? Because again, value is relative. So quite often, uh, what happens with beginners, they render the objects, they wait until the very end to do the background, and then by the time they do the background, they realize that they've gone either too light, too dark, um, the drawing looks different with the background. Uh, so let me do it really, really quickly. Uh, let's deal with the cast shadows. So keep in mind, cast shadows that are filtered through glass are going to have properties that do not follow our simple light logic rules. They might be darker, there might be light filtering through them, all kinds of stuff going on. Um, be sensitive and just see what's actually happening. Um, usually though it's a good idea to start simple and just average out the value that you're seeing. Uh, once again, follow the principle of shading a little bit, erasing a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do after I block in the general value of the cast shadow is to block in the general value of what's next to it, this stuff. Now, <clears throat> let's erase out any of the charcoal where I plan to add white. And let's start adding our white chalk. Use the side of your pencil and start putting in white everywhere you see, where you see it go lighter. which means everywhere. My dear students, make sure you shade absolutely every part of your drawing from corner to corner. I'm not gonna have time to do it on this demo. Uh, maybe after the demo's done, I'll tinker with this a little bit and I'll complete the drawing, maybe, maybe not. But you guys definitely do it. So add white everywhere you see the table lighter. And then pay attention to the value transition from here to here. If you guys remember the principle of keeping the value moving, that's what I'm talking about. Light is sitting here, and then there's going to be some kind of very simple, even gradient going this way. So it might be a little bit lighter than the paper here. I'm not dealing with the white here. Okay, my son again. Emil, I need you to, to go to your bedroom right now. Thank you. All right. And then, Probably here it starts going as dark as the toned paper. So very, very similar to this. Pay attention to the value transition. So to blend this out, instead of using a stump, which is going to give you uneven results, let's use a paper towel. You can see how smooth the paper towel allows me to go. You might have to work up another layer, go a little bit brighter. this way. Um, what else? Uh, there might be a little bit of light passing here. Not quite as bright as the pair, obviously. So I recommend you don't do what I do and start this a little bit earlier. Block in all the shadows and then all the complications, uh, the fact that there's light passing inside the shadow, all of that can be done with your needed eraser. So that's ink, not blood. Don't worry. Okay, so all this complicated stuff right here, the fact that we have light coming through, that could be just erased out. Like this, like this, 
What else? Okay, here too, right? We've got these really, really interesting, I think, light events happening here, right? We've got another cast shadow back here. So yeah, really this should be done probably somewhere halfway through the drawing. Definitely not the end like I'm doing. <clears throat> and use a separate part of the paper towel to smear down your charcoal and your white chalk. Uh, make sure they're not mixing together. Okay, uh, let me quickly do, deal with the background. Uh, guys, it's lighter here, actually very similar to the value here and getting darker this way. An easy way of getting that effect is by using your chamois, which I cannot find at this very moment. Here it is. <clears throat> so really, uh, maybe here I can use a dirty chamois that's been pre dirty with your charcoal reduction. Go a little bit darker. I go a little bit darker here. Going this way, like this. And then, if I need to go a little bit darker, I can use a stick of compressed charcoal. Right, uh, that same stick of compressed charcoal that I used for my charcoal reduction. So any big area, right? Uh, you can use your stick of charcoal. Let's see if I can find it. It might have a slightly different color to it. So maybe a slightly warmer brown than your regular drawing material, but it shouldn't really make that big a difference. Okay, so you can see that I've got a value transition in the background. Uh, everyone, it doesn't take a lot to make the drawing feel complete in the background. It just takes some kind of simple value transition, some kind of movement, some kind of indication that light is passing behind the objects. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, <clears throat> take the time to shade every part of your drawing. Again, it's a really important principle. <clears throat> Treat every part of the composition with equal attention. That is the main distinguishing feature between the works of the masters, the true masters, and, okay, maybe not necessarily bad artists, but artists that haven't quite achieved mastery. A master will spend as much time thinking about what's happening here as they will in the objects. It doesn't mean they're gonna have as much stuff everywhere. They probably won't, in fact, they definitely won't. But uh, it'll be thought about. They'll consider it. They'll think about it. They'll think about the relationships between the background, the foreground. Okay, um, I don't have time to work on the wood, but look, you guys figure it out. It's not all that hard. I'll quickly do it. Darker here. as well. Um, think about the value transition, it's going darker here, like this. And then probably this needs to be a little bit lighter than our paper tone. Let's add a little bit of white to this. Just a touch. Let's blend that down. Like this. And then we can start putting in detail. So in the whites, probably my detail could be done with our kneaded eraser, I'm sorry, our hard eraser. So I can erase out the wood grain a little bit. I can go in with a little bit of white to get that kind of streaky wood grain effect. And then probably here as well. Um, in the shadow side, I can use both a little bit of erasing to get the wood grain effect going this way, and also a little bit of charcoal to go darker. Okay, I think I've gone on long enough in this demo. You guys have the idea. I think that's it.